probably the last time I look phenomenal, um, considering that now I always have to take, uh, you know, certain things into consideration regarding my bodybuilding journey going forward. Vigorous Steve here with those progress pictures I said I wasn't going to share, but many of you have been requesting and basically telling me to put up or shut up and share those progress pictures. Now, many of you have been very kind and highly complimentary that I don't look as bad well, based on the YouTube video, probably not based on the pictures, which I will put on screen shortly. So here we are, Coach Steve at his absolute worst. Well, worst as of late. I definitely looked a lot worse when I broke my leg in a motorcycle accident or when I came back from traveling for an entire year. But as of the last 10 years, last Sunday, I probably looked the worst I've ever looked when it comes to, uh, you know, bodybuilding. So a little bit of a backstory. Feel free to skip ahead. There will be a unskippable ad waiting for you. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps. I'll just give a little bit of a backstory for the guys that are uh, not aware of what has been going on and why I decided to do um, or decided to come off cycle and do this fasting mimicking diet. So I'll speed through it real quick. October 2020, I was diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I decided to come off cycle, do a post-cycle therapy and recover my hypothalamic pituitary testes axes, doing up all, all the supplementations known to man in an attempt to resolve the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Five months after that, my PCD was successful. My testosterone was about 550 nanograms per deciliter. But the supplementation protocol was only 50% successful, judging by the ultrasound and the liver enzyme progression. So I was about halfway there to resolve the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, even though I was able to recover my HPTA. Um, pretty comparable, judging by the natural progression of testosterone concentrations compared to 10 years, 11 years earlier when I started taking PEDs, uh, 650 nanograms per deciliter to 515 nanograms per deciliter. Over the course of 10 years, using uh, many anabolics and PEDs in the meantime, I feel that uh, PCD was successful, but non-alcoholic fatty liver disease remained 50% there as where I was diagnosed. So I decided to brute force it with a fasting mimicking diet eating vegetables only for six weeks, which was tough. And my testosterone declined from 515 to 375 nanograms per deciliter. But judging by the ultrasounds and my liver enzymes and my ferritin concentrations, now non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is pretty much resolved. So I didn't do it by choice. I didn't do it for fun. I didn't do it to make YouTube content. I did it because I wanted to be in a perfect state of health again before I decided to continue with my bodybuilding journey. So um, another month or two, I will remain, you know, anabolics free and then, you know, go back on hormone replacement because I do like a little bit of androgen incentive to keep me going with my bodybuilding journey. So now we are at this point. In the meantime, I lost 30 kilos of mass or body weight and you know, assuming that my body fat levels are pretty comparable, let's say around 10%, maybe 12% in certain areas, my ligaments are pretty uh, lean, but my torso certainly isn't. So I lost 30 kilos in the process. I was about, I was, I can't remember where I was before the fasting mimicking diet, but, you know, from end to finish in, a res in an attempt to resolve the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease from 115 kilos to 85 and a half kilos, almost 30 kilos less, or 25% of my total body weight came off to get non-alcoholic fatty liver disease under control. So let's go into the pictures. Now, a little bit of a fair warning for full transparency. I did run all of these pictures through Lightroom because the camera on my Samsung phone isn't the greatest, even though it's one of the later models. And the old pictures, which I took over a decade ago when I was still drug free, those were probably taken with a Texas Instruments calculator. So those are not the best quality either. So I manipulated the contrast, the saturation, the brightness, the shadows, the texture, the clarity, and the sharpening a little bit, just a little bit, so these pictures would match what you would otherwise see in real life. So doctored, but not too doctored. And I know 
Some of my fellow YouTubers are probably on the edge of their seat, just waiting, waiting and calculating how many views they're going to get, going to get making a reaction video um, by responding to this uh, epic weight loss that occurred over the last seven months. Feel free, go ahead. You know, it's not like anybody else is uh, this open and transparent about their health conditions and allows everybody to come along on this resolvement journey, which I did. So feel free to go ahead and make a reaction video. Just be nice because karma is a bitch and what goes around comes around. And honestly, I wouldn't wish this condition on my worst enemy. So, um, you know, hopefully you will personally never have to go through a process like this where you lose 25% of your body weight. Um, but until that day occurs, then you know exactly how I feel right now. Let's get into the pictures. Let's do the after pictures first, a frontable bicep and backable bicep. And I got them on my phone right here. So I'll overlay them on the screen so you guys can follow along. That is me last Sunday at 85 and a half kgs. And that's after six weeks of fasting mimicking diets. But of course, I still ate, you know, a little bit more freely on Sunday because I like to go out you know, and have a little bit of a diet and a mental break on this uh, fasting mimicking diet. So this was a Sunday morning after six days of vegetables and, you know, five weeks or six and a half days of vegetables prior. Skinny AF, even though it do still look reasonably lean. Now, as you clearly can see, there's not so much muscle left. Of course, I still look bigger than average. I mean, 85 kilos is you know still a little bit more muscular than your average person. But considering where I came from, yeah, that's a big difference. Everything shrunk, including my face. The only thing that I gained was hair in the process because I stopped shaving my head. Now... The thing, the only thing that I'm happy with is that my obliques came in. So hopefully I'm able to maintain those obliques, you know, this streamlined. I didn't measure my waist, uh, unfortunately. I should have done that, you know, measured my waist. I think it was 34 inches at 115 kilos. And now, you know what, I'll measure my waist when I'm editing this video and I'll put that on the screen. So now, you know, hopefully 30 inches. If it's any less, I would be happy. But if it's any more, you know, I, I've always had a little bit of a wide waist. So my obliques came down and uh, I might have gained a little bit of lower back fat in the process. So, you know, if it didn't come down that much, it is what it is. Legs are still pretty lean. They actually look more separated now. My arms are, um, yeah, very skinny. And the most thing of note is that my lats almost disappeared. And you see that the only thing that stayed loyal were my calves. Those are almost the same size. So calves are loyal. And everything else is not. Now, back double biceps. Again, most of the thickness is gone. And you see that my rhomboids uh, remained to a certain extent. But what I find very funny to see is that my traps and my, uh, my upper rhomboids pretty much disappeared. And now you see that, that squat bubble. Uh, even though I haven't squatted in years, I used to squat many, many times. You get a little bit of a squat. What, what is it called? It's a little bit of a fatty tissue that protects your spine from the bar. Um, so there's still a bit of a souvenir from my days that I used to do heavy squats, but you see that it is protruding now as my traps and upper rhomboids collapsed. Now, shoulders are gone, lats are gone, uh, lower back fat is pretty much the same, and my glutes, they pretty much disappeared, really. Like my, my all my family members have horrible glutes, and I was still able to build them you know, pretty decently with barbell hip thrusts and some machine work and reverse hyperextensions and, uh, you know, everything else that we do for legs. But those pretty much disappeared to the point I, uh, I had to buy new pants because those, my old pants, my XL pants made for people with 34 inch waist, those always fell off. So I'll be looking forward to restore a little bit of meat on that area. Now, calves are still pretty comparable. Hamstrings came down a little bit in size. And, uh, yeah, biceps look still somewhat decent. But, you know, the difference is pretty notable or noticeable. On the side chest, it's not as bad, even though I did lose a significant amount of thickness. And the arm separation is uh, somewhat notable. Uh, yeah, I, I can't really say much about this. I mean, it's... Man, you see my glutes, my hamstrings, and my quad sweep is, uh, yeah, definitely not loyal. But again, the calves, still there. 
Now, I took a side tricep picture, but, you know, with this lighting and then the amount of body fat that I have, it's not very flattering. So, I won't share those. I won't bore you with those. I do have a vacuum pose, which, again, you know, judging that my obliques came in a little bit, my vacuum looks better, but no lats, no triceps, and no real quad sweep, no adductors anymore. It looks, uh, I look like a, my skinny younger brother. So, yeah. yeah, the only thing that improved was my face, right? I do look a little bit younger, but I'm, I'm you know, my, my waist came in a little bit. But besides that, yeah, not, not a lot of improvement over the last couple months, seven months, I think. This, yeah, that's about seven months in between these pictures. So, let's move on to what I looked like exactly one year ago when I was sauced to the max on 1500 milligrams of testosterone per week and how much was it running winstrol oral winstrol and oral superdrol for a photo shoot so this was approximately a year ago we'll just do the front and back double bicep uh, comparison this was pretty much a year ago when i took uh, the pictures that are plastered all over my website and i use as my profile picture um probably the last time i look phenomenal um Considering that now I always have to take, uh, you know, certain things into consideration regarding my bodybuilding journey going forward. So, you see here that I'm um, pretty well peaked, pretty lean, everything is separated, very neat, nice deep vacuum which looks better than it does right now. And uh, well, the hair is still present, but the most noticeable thing is the face. Yeah, Do you guys remember that shark from uh, Nemo? I look like that shark from uh, Finding Nemo movie, and now I look uh, just uh, my regular old natural self, just 10 years older, obviously. So that's <laughs> that's a huge comparison. That's probably the worst progress any, anybody has made over the course of a year, right? Now, in the back double bicep, it's pretty much the same. There, I'm fully peaked, still a little bit of a lower back fat. Um, I, I decided not to push it any further because I was already on cycle for a pretty long time. And, uh, you know, beyond this point, I usually start to lose cognition and productivity. So I decided to take my progress pictures with a little bit of lower back fat and, uh, you know, use a little bit of diuretics to make that look a little bit more pleasing. No lines on my glutes, unfortunately, only on the side chest. So when you compare the calves from this picture to uh, the picture from last Sunday, you see that they definitely came down. But keep in mind, during that time, I was running a calves everyday challenge which not many people joined um, because it was three working or three exercises with how many working sets was it? I think it was three exercises with one or two working sets each. And I was able to do that almost on a daily basis. I believe I skipped one day, so I wasn't age eligible to finish that contest. Uh, but I still got all my working sets in because I extended it with a day. So I was able to gain almost two inches on my calves by doing that, training the failure every day during February. So you know, the calves are pretty substantial. So again, it's a significant drop, especially in the back width. And of course, the shoulders and arms and you know, basically everything came down. So let's compare these pictures to me at my heaviest when I was still drug free. And at my heaviest, I was 88 kilos. Obviously, I was off season. So if there's no abs, uh, I'm sorry. You know, back then we didn't have so much uh, a picture making opportunity so wasn't really a lot of posing going on back then either so excuse my gnarly facial expressions these are just quick pics on a what was it 2k camera <laughs> probably how old was here i here i think i was 24 25 i'm not exactly sure now i do look better than these pictures even though i'm lighter so my lats are wider my arms are bigger my chest are, is bigger my vacuum is uh clearly better and my quads are pretty much the same size calves came up uh, but i have a little bit more separation so i do look better than my absolute heaviest when i was drug free same with the back double bicep you know back double bicep is a little bit more impressive that it's always been a stronger body part for me uh, i still didn't understand how to flex my calves and hamstrings and do the pose correctly um you know flare my lats out properly so again, it's, you know, I feel that these pictures are pretty comparable. I'm just posing better in the recent pictures from Sunday. And even there, I'm, I still, there's still a bit of a 
room for improvement because again i haven't really been practicing my posing for a while now let's compare the, the let's say the last pictures at i think i was 25 26 years old where i probably looked the best before i started uh, cycling i didn't still wasn't lean enough to really show my abs i have better pictures when i got absolutely you know in good condition when i was drug free but these are again pretty comparable um at comparable body weight, I think. I would think I was 84 kilos back then, or 82. And here I was, or maybe less. And I think I was way less. I think I was like 70, 74, 76 kilos in these pictures. Anyway, a little bit more quad separation in these pictures. Horrible sight lighting in the gym. Again, 2K camera with, uh, you know, one time. Right, you know, you have to every time you want to take a picture with a timer delay, you have to walk over and press the camera again. So it's a lot of walking back and forth, and then fingers crossed, you took a good picture. And nowadays, we can use an open camera, which is an application you can find on the Android store, and you just set the timer for two second intervals and you just start posing and take the best ones. That's what I did for these latest progress pictures. So front double biceps, arms are pretty comparable. Lats are a little bit better, but not. As good, quad separation is a little bit better uh, now. Um, and in the back double bicep, you see that, again, back has always been a stronger body part for me. Um, glutes are pretty comparable. Hamstrings are pretty much the same, and the calves uh, look better. I think my back double bicep look better, yeah, in these pictures, these old pictures, than they do right now. So, but it could also be the lighting. Now, luckily for me, I already look a lot better than I did last Sunday because I reintroduced the anabolic protein and healthy fats to my diet, added in a little bit of carbs here and there post-workouts. Of course, I started training again. So, so far, I trained back traps, rear delts, hamstrings, glutes, and calves over two days. Needless to say, I'm sore AF to the to the 10th degree i haven't been this sore in in a very long time so i'm sure that will uh, slowly get better as i pick up the training intensity and uh, let my body get used to moving some weight again again it's been six weeks since i went to the gym so some soreness is to be expected but a little bit of extra soreness and inflammation and uh, returning nitrogen balance and glycogen stores and perhaps intramuscular triglyceride stores as well already gained four kilos. Now, I don't think that's very sustainable. I don't think I'm gonna gain a kilo a day because you know it's been four days since those progress pictures. I don't think I'm gonna gain a kilo per day because that would mean I'll be back up to 115 kilos um, yeah, within a month. I just think it's reintroducing the food and going back to the gym, filling out a little bit. So I'll give you guys just a little bit of a sneak peek, a little bit of a sneak peek check. This is where we are right now. Not, not too bad. I'm sure it will improve over time. Again, I'm going to stay anabolics free for at least April, maybe even May, depending on the temperature and how fast I'm progressing uh, through this process. So about 88, 89 kilos upon waking after the bathroom. So that's the, the lowest body weight in the morning. And then I think I'll end up around 90, 92 kilos by the end of May, hopefully with comparable body fat levels or maybe even a little bit lower. Again, I'll have to go by strength progression and, uh, you know, see if I can, you know, get, get somewhere close to my previous working intensity. I highly doubt it without anabolics, um, but I, I would still like to restore a decent amount of strength before I reintroduce testosterone and the premobolin again. So those were the progress pictures. Um, I hope you didn't lose your appetite. Yeah, and this is something you might be able to expect when you are forced to uh, take a little bit of a break from bodybuilding. And, you know, let's be honest, a lot of guys look a lot worse. You know, when they stop bodybuilding, stop training, they end up like uh, the Michelin man, uh, skinny fat, basically, because they keep their eating practices going. And they no longer perform any uh, significant amount of physical activity, which I did. I still did fasted cardio. That is never going to stop because cardiovascular health is, uh, you know, something you can enjoy for the rest of your life, hopefully. And, you know, I still like to push boundaries a little bit when it comes to exercise. And of course, for, you know, cardiovascular endurance and uh, kicking ass on the elliptical, 
um, you don't really need to eat a significant amount of protein or uh, calories for that matter. So I hope it was informative, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope that you understand that going through this is not very enjoyable. Uh, because again, when I took those progress pictures last Sunday, I was uh, a little bit disgusted with myself. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. But now I look a lot better. So hopefully it's a steady progression upwards in an attempt to come to a comparable physique uh, in the near future, albeit 100% healthy. It might mean I never break that previous uh, awesome physique that I had a year ago, because again, I was loaded to the gills and uh, my blood work was uh, basically the polar opposite of what it is now. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Nobody is, uh, it's, it's the unfortunate thing about the fitness industry, right? Everybody's looking at the physique, but what should be the standard is the physique and the blood work at the same time. I'll make a separate video about the blood work, which I had exactly at that moment in time. Um, and maybe we can do a, a Coach Steve's worst blood work uh, video in the future. Anyway, the video's been way too long. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the ebooks on my website, vigorsteve.com slash shop. Looking for personalized advice, you can find the rates for consultations and coaching in the services section. Send me your blood work, no blood work, no coaching. End of story. Follow me on Instagram at Steve. Much love, and I'll see you in the next video.